EBS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is The Leader. On Thursday, the 8th of September, 2022, we lost our Queen. It was the day we all knew would eventually come, but still somehow hoped it would not. I think I speak for everyone in that she's that constant that's been here for my whole life, my mum's whole life, yes. my children. She's been making sacrifice for 70 years for us, you know, our people in the UK and, um, and the Commonwealth. She was our ever enduring head of state for 70 years. Through everything from the changing of prime ministers, numerous wars, prominent deaths, and global crises that rocked us all. A pillar of strength, duty, and continuity. The outpouring of grief has been felt around the world. It is with great sorrow that the French people have learned of the deaths of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen was admired around the world as not just our head of state and the head of the Commonwealth, uh, but for her enormous contribution. But with the Queen's passing, a king was made. I speak to you today with feelings of profound sorrow. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration, an example to me and to all my family. And as the Elizabethan era ends and the Carolean period begins, we look at how the nation prepared for this historic day. This is how we said our final goodbye to our Queen. I'm Robert Hazel and I'm Professor of Government and the Constitution at University College London. I think the reaction was one of shock um, and one of sadness. Uh, I mean, to talk about my own feelings, um, it's something I had long been prepared for because I am an expert on the monarchy. I knew about all the preparations that had been made for the Queen's death, codename Operation London Bridge. I'd been involved in rehearsals for what would happen. And despite all that preparation, uh, when it actually happens, it is a terrible shock. Uh, My wife told me of the news uh, with a frog in her throat. Um, We both gave each other a hug because it is something huge. I'm Robert Jobs from the the Evening Standard Royal Editor and I'm I'm the biographer of the King with a book called Charles, Our Future King. Of course, the palace and the people that officially break it, but of course there had been talk that something was was, uh, afoot. Um, I even myself went on television in Australia to say that I thought that we should pray for the best but expect the worst. And that was before the palace had issued a statement in which they said that there was concern for the Queen's health. I think once the word concern was used in an official statement from Buckingham Palace, it was quite clear that there was going to be a serious problem because they don't normally uh, ever use words like that in an official statement. We are all devastated by the news that we have just heard from Balmoral. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. I remember I I said when I heard from a contact about that she's gone. I I literally went, she's gone. And um, as a journalist covering the royal family for what, 33 years, you immediately go into overdrive into covering the story and making sure you're on top of the story. And rather than allowing yourself to get drawn into the morning, um, which is not always easy, but it's necessary. It was very well uh, planned for, and indeed Operation London Bridge for the Queen's funeral included a plan uh, for what if uh, she might die in Scotland. Um, which is in the event what happened. Um, so that too was all prepared for. It, it's almost as if it was a command performance that she didn't plan her passing in Scotland because she knew that Operation Unicorn, as it's called, had to come into play, which meant that the first part of her funeral would take place in Scotland, in Edinburgh. And so we gather to bid Scotland's farewell to our late monarch, whose life of service to the nation and the world we celebrate 
and whose love for Scotland was legendary. Um, she was remember her mother was Scottish, great her grandfather was the 14th Earl of um, Strathmore. So it was it was it was weird that it happened that way, but at the same time, I feel that um, she had something something new to it already. I think by doing that, she was always it was almost like her last performance, almost telling the, the country that you know, reminding them she was born the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and she wanted to stay that way, the way it always been throughout her reign. The planning and now the execution of Operation London Bridge for the 10 days of official mourning following the Queen's death is absolutely huge. It involves every arm of the state. Uh, the civil service have been working night and day, in particular the Foreign Office, preparing the guest list for the state funeral of the Queen. As her 12th Canadian Prime Minister, I'm having trouble believing that my last sit down with her was my last. The army has been busy everywhere. You've seen them very publicly through uh, the guards, uh, marching up and down the Mall, escorting the Queen's coffin uh, on her journey from Buckingham Palace to Lion State in Westminster Hall. And then again, we'll see them at the funeral taking her coffin to Westminster Abbey. And the police are hugely involved. Extra policemen have been drafted in to London from other uh, regional police forces um, because of the huge numbers who were expected to come over the next few days, partly to pay their respects, partly to line the streets for the funeral on Monday. And all the ceremonial is planned by officials, uh, some holding very ancient offices. The logistical planning for the funeral is huge because the head of state of every country around the world, and there are almost 200 countries around the world, with I think only three exceptions, has been invited together with their spouse or partner. Larger numbers have been invited from the 14 countries around the world where King Charles is now the head of state. He's now King of Australia, King of New Zealand, King of Canada, King of Jamaica, etc. And all these dignitaries uh, will have to be accommodated and looked after and then transported to Westminster Abbey. So there will be a huge security operation um, and there, all that will be going on outside Westminster Abbey. Meanwhile, inside, there will have been intense planning uh, by the Archbishop of Canterbury by the Dean of Westminster for the funeral service itself to ensure that all that uh, happens in a very solemn and dignified manner that the Queen has the best possible send-off that the Church as well as the nation can provide. Her late Majesty taught us much, if not more, about God and grace both in words and the actions that reinforce them than any other contemporary figure. After the funeral, uh, the Queen's coffin will be taken from Westminster Abbey to Windsor Castle, where she will be laid to rest in St. George's Chapel uh, in the Royal Vault. And that uh, she will be taken, I think, by car down the M4 to Windsor uh, and then up Windsor Hill into the castle. And I expect that that final laying to rest will be attended only by members of the royal family. 
with one official present, the Lord Chamberlain, who is the head of her household, uh, and that is Lord Parker, who until recently was the head of MI5, the security service. And his last duty to the Queen will be to break his stick of office over her coffin as it settles down into the royal vault, symbolizing the end of his service to the late monarch. So for anyone who has visited St. George's Chapel, uh, the royal vault is just a great big slab uh, in the pavement. Uh, but for the Queen's interment, that will be opened so that her coffin can descend into the royal vault and join the coffins of her husband, Prince Philip, who died only last year, just 18 months ago in April of last year, and also uh, her father, King George VI, is interred in the royal vault. And so uh, he was very beloved by the Queen, and she will, in her final resting place, be joining her father and her husband.